Tuesday. How's everybody doing? I hope it's been a great week. So tonight is Healthy Habits and we are going to talk a little bit about the Healthy Habits kit um, from doTERRA. So we're going to cover a few um, key oils, some supplements, and we're also going to talk a little bit about nutrition and how much water you should intake and why supplementation is important and a few little tidbits about building healthy habits. So without further ado, I always like to start the class with a few reminders and some of the basics as well in case um, you're new and joining us for the first time. So we're here to talk about healthy habits, but as they relate to doTERRA essential oils and the supplements that um, the doTERRA puts, puts together. So one of the things I like to start with is the three cool things about essential oils. And those three cool things are that they're 100% safe and natural, that they're more effective, it can be more effective than modern approaches um, to, you know, sort of everyday ailments, and they're super cost effective, and we'll kind of cover those individually. So 100% safe and natural, and I say that only when I talk about doTERRA essential oils, because I understand the purity and the quality and the sourcing and all of those things that are super important when you're looking to use essential oils. You know, I am following a feed this afternoon with some people talking about how to use essential oils for pets. And that's a class that we've done before and that we'll do again. And, you know, it's true that um, there are some oils that are good for pets and some that are not, but it's about being educated and about knowing also where those oils come from because the blanket, um, the blanket statement that essential oils are really bad for pets or what have you is not necessarily true. So we do have to just sort of, you know, take what we hear with a grain of salt and, and educate ourselves to know what's actually safe. Um, and that goes for us as well. When we talk about using our essential oils, we really want to make sure that we understand, again, that sort of what's in the bottle, right? Um, which we can, we can address. When we say that they are 100% um, safe, it, it, it accounts for um, both, you know, well, all ages, really. So we're looking at babies, we're looking at the elderly, and all we really want to do when we're doing that is looking at dilution. So dilution is super important to make sure that, um, for a few reasons, so we'll talk about that when we talk about topical application, but dilution really based on body mass. So for smaller children, you're going to use a little bit more of that carrier oil. For the elderly, the same. Again, when you're looking at body mass and the sensitivity for the skin. We talk about them being more effective uh, than some modern approaches, and that's really because when you use your essential oils, they are meant to and designed um, by nature, right? And nature's super smart, um, and our bodies are super smart. We are meant to live in a state of well-being, and we are not, um, you know, we're not meant to live with disease. So disease is a byproduct of the things that we <laughs> that we are doing to ourselves. Um, based on our environment, right? The things, the toxics, um, products that we use on our skin, that we use to clean our homes, that we bring into our homes, and just everyday sort of pollution. Um, the things that are great about essential oils, when they create that sense of homeostasis in the body, it's really, um, you know, allowing us to use them without side effects, without addictions, and those are some of those challenges that we see in traditional um, over-the-counter medications cheaper than if I, than you know most of those over-the-counter um, products as well you'll find most of your oils are just pennies a use and a couple drops will do um, less is more when you're talking about oils you're um, much better to use say two drops um, for something several times a day than to go and use like 10 drops all at once um, your body just doesn't process stuff that way and it's much better to give it a little bit over time. Those are the three cool things. Here are the three ways that we use our oils. So we use our oils um, topically, aromatically, and internally. And when we look at using them aromatically, I think that's the place that most people start, right? They start with a diffuser, they want their home to smell nice, and it absolutely achieves that. Uh, but what you want to make sure, again, is that you're using those oils, um, that there is some purity to those oils, and not all oils are created equally. And when I talk about um, the sourcing, 
the distribution, the quality testing, all those things again play into that and you want that even when you're just diffusing because really you're putting that out into the air that you're breathing, you're putting that out into the air that your children are breathing and if you're using a high quality essential oil it's actually purifying the air, it has the ability to uplift mood, there's so many ways that our oils can impact our well-being. Um, but only again if they are pure essential oils um, and they will then have the efficacy that you're looking for. When we talk about topical application, uh, that's where we talk about dilution. And essential oils are aromatic compounds, so they um, actually evaporate quite quickly. There's actually a flash off uh, when you pour it out of the bottle onto your hand or wherever. Uh, and so because they um, they diffuse quite quickly. What you want to do is have a carrier oil. So something could be Jehovah, rosehip, shea butter, um, fractionated coconut oil, anything that you want to put on your skin, you can use to dilute. And you add the oil to that and then you also rub that into the skin. It creates better surface area. It helps with the absorption. It also helps with any skin sensitivities. Again, for say the elderly or young children, you'll dilute a little bit more. Also with our hotter oils, so something like a cinnamon or an oregano, they can be quite spicy and again can be quite hot on the skin. So you'll want to just balance it out with the proper dilution and there's lots of guidance out there on how to do that. And then we talk about internal use and this is the one that I think is where essential oils get the best, you know, sort of the the biggest bad rep um, in terms of you know don't ever use your oils internally I can say I've been using my oils internally for four years now and only ever to improve my well-being I use something called digest Zen which is our digestive blend every single time I eat something spicy like a Mexican or a curry or you know something like that every single time and it helps really settle the stomach you can use that for motion sickness. There's so many different ways to use our oils internally and we'll talk a little bit about how we're going to use lemon um, as well internally. So again, just knowing the source of your oils is key to being able to use them to support your well-being uh, and to really get the right benefits out of them, right? Um, so on to how do we create really good habits? So habits are one of those things that you can't, um, you know, it, it just doesn't happen once, right? Habits are not a finish line uh, to be crossed. They are a lifestyle to be lived. And I think that holds true if you've ever tried to integrate either a um, exercise program or you've tried a specific, you know, diet, whether that be keto or vegan or something like that. And it's really not something that you can kind of just dabble in it really does have to become part of your lifestyle because once you make it part of your lifestyle it's not hard anymore it's just part of, of you know sort of who you've become and I've done this over the last five years integrated one thing every once in a while so I'll get something sort of bedded down um, and then I'll introduce something else. And that is the key is not to overwhelm yourself. Don't think that overnight you can, you know, flip a switch and all of a sudden become, um, you know, a holistic genie and, you know, take all the tricks out of the box. You really do need to um, take it one step at a time. So find something that seems achievable, prove to yourself that you can do it and then add in and layer on to the next thing, right? So my latest thing is uh, a twice a day meditation. And when I first started, I, I've been hesitating this whole meditation practice because of how much time I thought it was going to take. And this is supposed to be two 15 minute sessions a day. And I was like, okay, um, but I'm going to try it, right? And anything that you try, give yourself a good window. And I, I was listening to a podcast this morning and they said a hundred day window. We've said, you know, we've heard 21 days. You know um, there's so many different theories but give yourself they said ideally it's a 66 day window but give yourself a hundred and if you can commit to something for a hundred days you can actually then change the habit um, and the example he gave actually was really interesting so a um, bit of mind over matter said he was going to learn to brush his teeth with his left hand and so every day he goes to pick up his toothbrush with his right hand. He's got a sticky on the mirror that says, 
brush your teeth with your left hand. He would then transfer it, put it in his left hand, and halfway through brushing, you'd put it back in his right hand. It's this sort of subconscious um, reaction that you have trained your body and trained your mind for how many years that you just use your right hand. You always brush with your right hand. So you're trying to unlearn a habit um, that's ingrained, right? And so you have to really set your, you know, set it for a hundred days. And if you need to put a sheet on the bathroom mirror and, you know, cross it out every day that you, you know, achieve um, the thing you've decided to do and you give yourself, you know, credit for that. And also celebrating those, you know, little milestones. So when you celebrate something you've achieved, something, even something little, it really can kind of spur you and keep you going. So think about what you're going to celebrate with when you have mastered a new habit. So um, the, oh, Ziva meditation, I think was your question, Lise. Um, Ziva meditation is the one I've started and I, I love it. It's super simple and it is very, um, it's very doable and very, um, you know, by design was created for busy people with, you know, sort of real lives, not people who have, you know, ample time to just sit around and meditate and um, chant all day long. It really is designed for busy people, but the benefits you get from that meditation bring you the clarity and the focus that you need to then be more productive and effective um, for the rest of the time that you have. And I am seeing those benefits and I'm really, um, I'm really glad that I started this habit. Now I'm a month in, so I'm, you know, 30 days. So let's see, let's see how I can make this to the 100 days and maybe you all can be my accountability partner. So check me back. Um, so yes, creating habits, bite them off one at a time, set yourself goals, set yourself reminders, decide what's important. And I said, layer it in. So, okay, so we're here, we're gonna chat through the Healthy Habits Kit. And this kit is um, a amazing way to get started with doTERRA or even to layer in. So if you already use your oils, but you're really just a diffuser kind of person, uh, you dabble, you've got the top 10 oils and you kind of just mix and match in the diffuser and stuff. This is another layer. So we're looking at supplements, we're looking at the deep blue rub, we're looking at a couple other oils, something like Balance, uh, which isn't in the top 10. So really trying to make sure that um, we're digging in a little bit deeper to all the benefits in those. So first we wanted to just breeze the topic of nutrition as well. Um, because really when we look at healthy habits, we're looking at exercise, food, mindset, all of those things. So what do we know about our food? So it's really important to know where your food comes from. And if you eat meat, what your food ate, right? So if you are a meat eater, you should really understand what that cow or chicken or whatever was fed because, and, and this is why grass fed um, beef is so much better for you um, in terms of you know it's the byproduct you are eating what your food ate so again comes back to same with soil and why we use organic because what's been put into the soil and what's been put on our plants looks very different from big commercial farming versus um, an organic farm or food that you've grown yourself so understanding where your food comes from again what's same about your essential oils right what is the source, where is that plant material being grown, how is it being grown, and what is it being treated with, and how is it being nourished. Um, that will have a direct impact on how it nourishes your body. So, and then what, there's a couple other pieces. So it's not just, you know, what you put in and calories, it's what do you digest and what do you absorb. So both of those things are really, really critical when you're looking at the food, because if you're not absorbing the nutrients or you're not digesting things properly, it can have side effects um, as well. So when we look at um, food, and again, I'm all about balance. I do eat meat, but I don't eat a lot of meat and I only eat either organic or grass-fed meat. So it has a really different impact on my body than again, commercially farmed um, meats. But I don't, advocate for any one type of diet or protocol. What I do believe is that you need to reduce gluten
gluten, dairy, sugar, those sorts of things that are proven to cause inflammation in your body. So there's no, there are no nutritionists out there that tell you that gluten is good for you and same with sugar. Sugar is not good for us. So I go with the common thread through the nutrition world where I don't, you know, subscribe to any one polar um, opinion, it's, it's a balance, right? And it's like, so if you're gonna have something sweet, have something that's sweetened, say with honey or maple syrup or dates or something, but not processed white sugar, um, because that has such a different impact on your body. We should always be getting our greens. Again, if you're not a, you know, kale lover, fine, but you can also put, um, you can put frozen spinach in a smoothie and I promise you, you cannot taste it. So if you're having a hard time getting greens, just think about how to be a little bit more creative. You can make tacos with um, all kinds of veggies done in the food processor and then just toss them in with the tacos and nobody's gonna know they're there. Same with spaghetti sauces and stews and there's so many different ways to integrate all your veggies and not have to taste them if that's a challenge for you or your kids. So when we look at um, <clears throat> amounts as well. And I think it's really easy to overeat, especially uh, in the culture that we live in. We are, you know, we're in an area, you know, we live with an abundance of food, not always high quality food, but volumes of food. And so it's super important to you to just be mindful of how much we're eating. When we look at a serving a plate, we really want to make sure that we're getting, so protein could be sort of palm of your hand. If we're going to use our hand as an analogy. So the palm of your hand for protein, a fist size of veg, right? So again, that veg is the prom prominent thing on your plate. Um, a little bit of fats, so good healthy fats. Um, so that's, you know, say a tablespoon or two, and then a carb. And again, carb is smaller than our protein, right? So again, just having some balance on our plate, but being mindful again about um, the volume. Thinking about to intuitive eating or being mindful when we eat, and I'm gonna admit I am the worst um, at this because I really love food and I tend to eat very fast. And I try to be more mindful when I eat so I'm actually tasting it. <laughs> it's really easy for me just to inhale. I'm always the first one um, done dinner. And I would really like to slow down. And so again, that's something that I personally have to work on because um, I know it's not good for me to eat super fast, but there's lots of sort of habits around just even how we eat. So for example, um, a lot of people get into yo-yo dieting, right? So that's a challenge. We look at um, food as a filler instead of um, fuel, right? So how it's nourishing our body. So we go, oh, it's lunchtime. I need to eat something. And they just grab a something, whether that's a you know, drive through something or you've got a bar of, a, you know, granola bar or something in your drawer and you just eat that mindlessly um, instead of thinking about what I put into my body and how that's going to nourish my body. Uh, and then honoring your, your body signals. So again, just because it's noon doesn't mean you have to eat lunch if you're not hungry. Um, also thinking about how um, you can incorporate intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is, is again, super popular right now, so many different theories on it. What I believe is that there is definitely a window in which we shouldn't be consuming food because you do need to give your body a chance to digest. Basic digestion window is about eight hours. So what I like to do um, is give my body at least a 12 hour window. And when you look at that overnight, that is not hard to do. If you stop eating after dinner and you have your first meal around say nine o'clock, you've actually almost done a 14 hour fasting window. And what that does is allow your body to process the food you ate for dinner. So that last bit, which is your about your eight hour window. And then it also allows some extra time where your body starts that cleansing process, right? So that is a challenge when we are continually eating, eating really late, you know, eating the first thing we do in the morning, it's overwhelming to our system because it never really truly gets to digest um, what it's just ate before it's processing again. So giving yourself that window and again, 
you do the research and see what works for you. And I know what works for me because I've tried longer windows, shorter windows, and I know that I just try not to eat after dinner. So maybe on the weekend, um, I might have a little snack um, when we're watching a movie or something, but not every single night am I having something after dinner. And I do try to wait until at least nine o'clock in the morning before I have my breakfast. So giving myself a good, uh, a good window. And yeah, so just being mindful again of what you're eating, how you're eating, you know, being appreciative for the food that we do have, being appreciative of what it took to get it to the plate. Um, I know we're, a lot of us are really removed from that process and I think that that's one of the beautiful things I love about my oils is there is a story on the other side of this bottle that is so great and when you um, look to the website where doTERRA puts out all their quality testing and purity testing it's called um, the website's called source to you and there's stories about where all the oils are harvested and those communities that bring those oils to us so you get um, say pink pepper from uh, Kenya you get um, frankincense from Somalia you get the the citrus from say Brazil and Italy and it's just amazing the communities and the families and the entire um, you know economies that are built in these communities um, based on them being able to provide these essential oils to us so there's such a great story there so water is another one of those things and if you you know uh, they say we can live weeks without food, but we cannot live weeks without water. Water is critical for so many reasons, and I know everybody knows this, but what does that mean? And, you know, we're told we need eight glasses of water a day. Well, that's great, except that we all weigh something different, and we all have different body mass, and we all have different activity levels. And so you really have to, again, just know what works for you. But what I try to do is front load my water consumption in the morning. One, because while you sleep, you dehydrate yourself just through simple breathing. You wake up in the morning, you have like a dry mouth. Um, you should always start the day on an empty stomach with a glass of warm water. And that just sort of kickstarts your digestive system. Sometimes I'll do an apple cider and lemon um, mix in that warm water sometimes i do like a peppermint tea sometimes i just kind of mix it up um, but always something warm and fairly neutral uh, to start the day good guideline for water is about half your body weight in ounces so if you weigh 120 pounds then you would want about 60 ounces of water in a day so if you have a water bottle that you carry around all the time take a look and say is that you know is it a 20 ounce bottle or 15 ounce bottle or whatever and do the math and make sure you're kind of getting that in if you though also do a workout you do a spin class you go play volleyball whatever you're doing you're going to need to replenish that water too so don't think that just your half your body mass and water is actually your baseline that's for if you're just sitting at your desk all day um, or reading a book on a sunday afternoon you still need that much water just to kind of maintain and it's so good for being able to flush um, the digestive system and it's good for you know clear skin and there's so many reasons to drink water so that's a baseline and what we like to do is add our citrus so we have our lemon um, that comes in this healthy habits kit and that is one of the ones that I think a lot of people also start with if they don't start with diffusing they'll try at least a little bit of citrus in their water and if you're one of those people that doesn't like to drink water because it's boring try tossing a couple um, drops of citrus and we have all kinds of citrus we have grapefruit and lime green mandarins one of my favorites we've got tangerine uh, wild orange so many options in the citrus family and you put a couple drops of that in super great for digestive and really great for um, again helping you drink your water so supplements so lots of people say we if you eat a really healthy diet a balanced diet you don't necessarily need supplements what I want to share is why I think that that's not necessarily true. Um, one is that if you did a blood panel on the average person, that they will be deficient in vitamin D, probably magnesium, probably looking for some B vitamins. There will be a number of things that they're going to be lacking in. So I think supplementation is a given in our environment. I think, you know, just even stress levels require extra supplementation. 
one of the things too is that our food has changed. So if you take an apple and you took an apple in 1951 and you looked at the nutritional value of that apple and you took an apple in the year 2000, it has lost 41% of its vitamin A, 55% of its iron, and has less thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, all the stuff that you would think you're getting out of your apple, but looks very different than it did say 50 years ago. So this is why we need to supplement because our food is just not what it is. Our soil is depleted and therefore the byproduct um, that we're getting, the fruits, the veggies, whatever, are just not you know what they're meant to be. So unless you're growing all your own food and you get super duper fertilizer, um, you probably could use a supplement. So we want supplements that are bioavailable, which means, again, when I talked about absorption, right? You want a supplement that's actually gonna be absorbed by your body um, so that your body gets all the great benefits out of it. And that is one of the best things about um, doTERRA's LLB. So I've got it here, it's this three pack, um, and it is highly bioavailable. And so by design, you are getting the benefits out of those supplements. And you can tell that because there's a lot of supplements out there that you'll see and your pee tells all, right? So if you um, are dehydrated, you're, out, you're not getting enough water, or you're taking supplements um, that are just literally flushing through, your urine can actually be a bright yellow color. So you always want, again, your one of your measurements and your own sort of health test um, can be is just to see the color of your urine. Your urine really should be pretty clear. Um, and if it's not, then maybe you want to investigate why or just up your water <laughs> consumption. So, um, but that is one of the things you can tell about LLV. So we have, um, I said there's the three. So this is the EO Omega. So essential fatty acids um, and some essential oil blend. You've got the um, Microplex. So this is your essential vitamins and minerals. And then you got your cellular, um, which is here for sort of a blend of um, sort of botanicals and extracts like pomegranate seed and green tea and things that are good for cellular energy and longevity. So that's the lifelong vitality pack. So those three and you would take those daily. Um, as well in the kit comes Terrazyme. So this is a digestive enzyme. And again, so we talked about absorption of what you eat and we also talked about digestion of what you eat. And it's super critical that you digest the food you eat properly because you really want that system to be going in and out, in and out, in and out. The things that you are meant to eliminate, you don't want stuck in your body because <clears throat> that creates a level of toxicity uh, in your system. Terrazyme helps break things down. <clears throat> Sorry. So all the digestive enzymes to help you break down the food that you have um, just ingested. <clears throat> and there's a video I did a couple days ago. I saw this and I thought it was really cool. Take two bottles uh, or two <laughs> bottles, two bowls of oatmeal and you let them sit on the counter for a couple hours and they'll kind of get kind of hard and crunchy almost like really super dry because the water evaporates and they're just kind of hard and clumpy. Take a Terrazyme capsule, open it, pour it over one of the bowls and then stir and you will see that oatmeal now becomes liquid again like it becomes soft and palatable and there's a scent like a consistency to it so you can see like within a matter of minutes that that oatmeal is being digested, that it's helping you process that oatmeal. And the other bowl, you can start all you want, it's still gonna be hard and crusty. So I had to prove that one to myself, which I did. I'm gonna share the video because I thought it was really cool. So um, Terrazyme, really great if somebody has digestive challenges, um, but honestly, just with every meal, and then you don't have to worry about the absorption or the digestion of what you're eating. PB Assist is our proprietary probiotic and there is so many companies that do probiotics now and we've learned a lot about probiotics um, over the course of a number of years because um, they become super popular and everybody's trying to understand really you know the microbiome and how does it all work and what we know is the probiotic is great but you also need the prebiotic fiber 
so that you actually, the probiotic can actually go to work. So what we have is this cool little capsule. So you can see the clear part, you have your prebiotic fiber, and then you have your probiotic in here. The way this is double encapsulated means it doesn't require any um, refrigeration, which makes these great for traveling. Um, just, you know, I take mine with me to the office, so I have it with my, um, you know, for my afternoon meal or what have you, and you just, you don't have to worry about refrigerating it, which is great, and um, really helps. And I know there's a number of people in my community that swear by this probiotic, so definitely worth giving it a try. Um, again, just, you know, it's a complete probiotic with that prebiotic fiber. Deep blue, love my deep blue. Um, so if you're one of your healthy habits is going to be start exercising and you get some sore muscles, this is your best friend. Um, I love using this one anytime you've had a good workout, this is great, but it's also really super supportive for that time of the month, for any sort of back aches or cramping. It's great for kids for growing pains on their little legs. And I always like to take just a little um, drop of it, like pea size on the back of my hands. And just before bed, I'll just like rub it here on the back of my neck and a little bit on my shoulders. And just again, take out some of that tension that sort of built up through the day. So that's the deep blue. Okay, so then we get into the oils that come in this particular kit. So we have On Guard. So On Guard is this wonderful, smells like Christmas to me. Um, it is cinnamon, clove, eucalyptus, wild orange, and rosemary. And this one is awesome. I use this actually um, every morning that I oil pull. So that's taking a little bit of coconut oil, a couple drops of On Guard, and swishing it in your mouth for about 15 minutes helps um, extract some of the toxins out of your body and then you spit um, spit it out. But this I use for that. I use this uh, a couple, well, this actually comes in a capsule as well. So um, the oils that doTERRA created specifically for ingestion, so things like the Digestin, the On Guard blend, they actually come in a gel cap already. So you can just take it um, that way and I'll use those certainly before I'm traveling really great idea in the current environment that we're in to support your immune system. So that's what this one is. This is also really great for making an on-the-fly cleaner. So all-purpose cleaner, a little bit of vinegar, baking soda, a couple drops of On Guard, and you're good to go. So, um, balance. This one is our grounding blend. Uh, roll it on the bottom of your feet, uh, either first thing in the morning or at the end of the day. This one has a really amazing sort of sweet and woodsy scent. Um, and so when you think about grounding, you think about a tree and the roots. And so this is one of those grounding blends again, because it's got a lot of tree oils in it. Um, I actually really like this one. Um, I put a couple drops in my mask uh, when I'm going to the grocery or any time that I have to wear my mask. And then that way I'm getting this really nice inhalation. Um, keeps me calm because I don't particularly love wearing my mask but I'm doing it anyway so put a couple drops of balance or even say wild orange or something that's really peppy in your mask. Frankincense. So frankincense. Uh, this one is amazing for skin, for diffusing for mental focus, for cellular support. So anybody fighting something chronic, two drops of frankincense under the tongue before bed. Um, super supportive. So love frankincense. Lemon. So we talked about lemon. Uh, putting it in your water, any of the citrus in your water. This one's also great as a, um, a cleanser. So it's all things cleansing, right? Great internally, but also externally. Again, makes a great all-purpose cleaner. Vinegar, water, baking soda, a few drops of uh, lemon, good to go. This makes a really great um, polish for stainless steel. It's degreasing, degumming, like you've got something, stick, you know, a sticker on something you've purchased and you're trying to get that sticky residue off. Lemon oil is your friend. Um, so you can always try your lemon oil. And then lavender. So I think everybody's pretty familiar with lavender being, you know, sort of super calming, but it's also really calming to the skin. Um, and and the emotions, right? So topically, so this would be something, I would mix the two of these in a little spray bottle with some water and some coconut oil. 
and after sun. So if you've been out and I understand um, that it is hot everywhere in the world now, <laughs> on this side of the world anyway, um, I've been hearing lots of reports from Canada that it's, um, it's steamy right now. So if you are getting too much sun, um, the two of these combined um, are really great for um, helping your skin after too much sun. All right, so that is the overview of our Healthy Habits Kit. It is um, about 200 US. So in the Canadian market, it would look a little bit different, but it's about 200 US in the US market and the Cayman market as well. And is that it is a really great way to get started with your oils. If, and you know what, um, again, help you start building in some of those healthy habits if you're gonna want to drink some more water and you want some lemon or you said you're picking up a routine where you're going to be a little bit more mindful about what you eat and maybe start some supplementation that can really sort of up your digestion and your absorption um, from all those great things that you're eating. So resources. So if you have more questions, give me a ring, shout out on Facebook or Instagram or wherever you want to catch me. Um, I'm going to post up that um, video I did on Terrazyme because I think that was really great. And if you've got any other questions, you know how to find me. And if you've got any other um, tips or tricks that you think the community would like, feel free to um, post them here on this video because we're here to share and, you know, and create wellness together. So enjoy the rest of your week guys and i will be back uh i think in a couple weeks actually for a special summer oils class um i'm gonna take next week off i think because it hey it's summer and i want a vacation too and um and then we'll be back with summer oils and keep an eye out for some posts because i'm gonna start posting some stuff on summer cool summer tricks so hope everybody's gonna enjoy the rest of the week enjoy summer and we'll talk to you soon Cheers.